Hey Trojans, this is Jeff. Um, just want to give you um, our latest updates. And I think this is the final update to get us calibrated with uh, making an, a behavior office referral. Um, some of the communications that go with Skyward, um, we've been working on making improvements with them, you know, since I've been here. Um, just trying to create more clarity, trying to eliminate um, duplications and making sure we can become, you know, a well-ran machine. So, you know, we left the, uh, the building a year and a half ago. I think that's right. Yeah. And then we had to go to something a little bit different, basically emailing. Um, and then most of the discipline follow-ups were more like contacting parents. Well, now that we're back in brick and mortar, and as we are also anticipating the migration over to cumulative, um, we're, we're got, kind of getting our bearings back about us. And then we, of course we have some, a brand new batch of teachers this year, the cohort of 2022. And then I'll include last year's cohort of new teachers because they really didn't get to work in the building the way the building had worked before the, the pandemic. So just want to create some clarity and let you know what the tights are and then how teachers can also kind of work their looses or kind of color outside the lines. I was in a really good meeting on Monday with the resource department. Um, wanted to know uh, about how best practices could be for documenting student behaviors and I'm taking the egregious behaviors like fights, threats, students showing up drunk or high on drugs, kind of kind of kind of put that over here. OK, that's not what I'm talking about right now. What I'm talking about right now are kind of those annoying um, behaviors that can, you know, kind of interrupt learning. Um, and we know that we work with our kids and we know, especially after the pandemic, I know we're all giving kids a little more latitude, but I don't want you guys to lose the clarity in giving them that latitude. They still got to see where the high bar is, and we want to achieve that with all students. Classrooms I've been in so far um, observing have been great. I mean, of course, when the principal shows up, things tend to get a little bit better. I'm very aware of that. Um, I was in a classroom this week, and the teacher just kept doing redirections, redirections. The kids were following her lead, doing a great job. So I know that um, there's impacts going on out there, but sometimes kids can kind of, you know, take away from the learning and sometimes you do have to send um, an office referral. And, and here's the expectations that you've addressed it with a student, okay? You've talked to the student. It's been an, not an implicit, but an explicit conversation. You know, you're letting them know this is what you need. And this is before a student has even behaved out. This is helping kids understand the temperature of the water okay and when you get to that point with a student you're basically releasing control you're giving that student agency to take care of whatever the behavior is now most of our kids are going to do fine we don't have a lot of kids that do a lot of repeat behaviors they may go on to a different behavior but they tend to kind of hold things in check when we work with them if that's not working, the expectation is you do reach out to a parent. I know that takes time. That's a lot of what we do here at the administrative level. Okay. And that could be in the form of an email. And if it's a parent that doesn't speak English or read English, um, the expectation is you would do some type of a translation. You could use Pacific interpreters and make a phone call. That's going to be more personable. And at least what's worked for me is when you partner with family members, it could be a parent, could be a grandparent, could be a legal guardian, could be an aunt or an uncle the student's living with. Um, but when you partner with them, you tend to have the best results, meaning the behavior goes away and the student lives more of a tier one life. So sounds like a lot of time, but I'll tell you what, if you really massage that and work with that, you're going to have a better return from the students. Okay, for those students who just clearly behave out and you got to send them, you know, on a referral to us, um, that's fine too. Uh, just make sure you're sending it through Skyward. If it's a more one of those, um, like I said, more of the egregious situations, um, as soon as you can, call 70777. That'll patch you through to the main office, and you'll just need to ask for someone to respond to your classroom right away. If you can let Pam, Courtney, or whoever's picking up the phone give us a little bit of idea what we're walking up into, that would be helpful too. What doesn't work, you guys, is just telling kids go to the main office because they do not go to the main office. 
and then we spend time looking through the hallways. Chances are they've left campus. Um, that doesn't work. And I'm back to the non-egregious behaviors. Okay, so that just becomes very futile, and we don't get any type of a, you know, a, a good closure with that. So egregious situations, especially if kids are getting escalated, and and you don't feel like you can intervene in any type of a effective way, um, and that's fair because that happens. That happens quite often uh, in schools. Um, just call seven zero seven 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 and let your kids know that ahead of time. You know, as part of your daily thing make it a good thing tomorrow I'll tell them hey i just found out how i can work with this that helps kids understand there's also a response system that's going to make some of our kids who are kind of quiet feel even more safe at school that we do have mechanisms in place but what i need from you is that we use these consistently and when you start to color outside the lines and send us an email we may not even see that till lunchtime if you send it in the morning some of my emails i don't even check until the nighttime. Okay, so that is not going to bring you a good response in, in an egregious situation. And if you're trying to just do an office referral, the email you're going to get back from me is get into Skyward, because chances are I will have already done that. And if I see you've already worked with a parent, you've already worked with a student, you've got that documented in there, we're going to work with a student, okay, at the office level and, and do whatever tier two um, type of intervention we're going to do. We're going to involve the parents. Anytime we bring a student in the office, we are going to involve the parent or guardian. They're going to know that. So I don't want us to be the first line of communication with a parent, unless it's egregious, of course. So help us out with that. Um, our system is refined. We've worked on it hard since 2017, 18. And I thought we were kind of getting to a good spot before the pandemic, before the distance learning part of the pandemic. And now we're back. So we got to shake off some of that distance learning rust and get back to good practices, best practices so that we can work efficiently. I had Courtney Sullivan run a report for me a week ago and all of our follow-ups other than that day, we've been able to follow up with students. Another thing that you need to know is other than the teacher that tells us, you know, the student is referred and we need your help with this, we really can't kind of put it on a marquee or all these emails letting everybody know what happened to a student. That's there's privacy issues there, you guys. If it's a safety issue and the student isn't safe for the building and we've got a safety plan set up, all the people that need to know are gonna need are gonna know. Okay. So I know that feels not very transparent, but also we don't want to do things that are gonna get in the way of the legal system and make our, our lives tough as far as um, you know, as a school standpoint. We don't want to be tomorrow's news in the newspaper. So there's some legal steps we're following here. Most of you, when you're working with a student, you are on a, you are on a need to know basis, but most of us aren't, okay? And if it's a school-wide situation, chances are the student isn't returning to school anyway, and we're working with counselors and outside agencies, parents, what have you. So if you do have a concern about a specific student, what I would say, if it's a senior, talk to Stacy or myself. If it's a junior, talk to Lori. If it's a sophomore, talk to Brendan. And for right now, if it's a freshman, you can talk to Doug or you can talk to me. Eventually, it'll be Jeanette again. So we're really the right people to bring the information to or the inquisitiveness and curiosities. Um, but to keep talking about it out, you know, at large out there, it just creates more confusion. And, and really, if you really want the matter dealt with, take it to the source. And you know what? I'm not saying we're perfect, but if you know some things we don't know, we can work with that too. So anyway, it takes all of us. I know you guys have heard me say that before. I want to work together with everybody, but we got to work within the system. And again, if it's egregious, if it's one of those situations that's escalating fast, 70777, okay? You can even tape that to your phone, whatever you need to do, okay? Um, but I wouldn't put it where the kids can see it because they've used it in the past and we don't want them on that. So. Anyway, when you share that with the kids, don't tell them the number. Just tell them you have a secret number. Okay, thanks, everybody.